Hello. This podcast is about Newton's first law of motion. In this podcast, we'll talk about inertia and equilibrium. First, let's take a look at inertia. So particles naturally resist changes to their motion. The natural state is for an object to be at rest or moving with constant velocity. And so in this natural state, they resist changes. Well, if you're at rest or moving with constant velocity, the type of changes you're resisting are speeding up, slowing down, and changing directions. So we do know that an external force, an external net force, will cause changes in a particle's or object's motion. But in the absence of that external force, the natural state will be for the object to be at rest or continue to move with constant velocity. So let's just take a look at the Earth's surface compared to outer space. Because of course we live on the Earth and I don't believe any of us have been to outer space. So our experiences are just based on Earth's surface. But that's not what's natural for the universe. So on the Earth's surface, all motion eventually stops. That seems to go against our statement up here that the natural state is at rest or moving with constant velocity. On the other hand, outer space, motion is continuous. We now know that the reason on Earth's surface all motion eventually stops is because friction exists in our atmosphere and on our surfaces. However, in outer space, friction does not exist and that's why motion is continuous. So this point caused some confusion early on, hundreds of years ago, when because of our experiences on Earth, many scientists thought that the natural state of an object was at rest, that no matter how fast it was moving, everything eventually came to a rest, so that was its natural state. And of course, back then, hundreds of years ago, we had very little experience with outer space. Nobody had been in outer space. We didn't fully understand the motions of the stars and planets. But now that we have a deeper understanding, we realize that the natural state of motion in the universe is either at rest or moving with constant velocity. And I point this out and make a big deal of this because we tend to rely on our own experiences. And if we do that, we think that eventually all motion is going to stop. But we have to remember that's because of friction, which is an external net force. So let's talk about how we change or how we measure the rate in which a particle's motion changes. And of course, we know that as acceleration. And we also know that it requires a force to cause an acceleration. So if we're changing the state of motion, speeding up, slowing down, or changing direction, it requires acceleration. And let's take that one step further. We know from our previous physics course that mass is inversely proportional to the acceleration. So if we have two particles with the same net force acting on them, the particle with the heavier mass is going to have the slower acceleration. Or we can say that the mass of object 1 as a ratio to the mass of object 2 is inversely proportional to the ratio of their accelerations. And this leads us to our definition of inertia. It's a particle's resistance to changes in motion. And because of this fact up here, this relationship up here, mass is a measure of inertia. Notice that inertia is its resistance to motion. So if an object has more inertia, it's going to be more resistant to changing motion, which means it's going to have a lower acceleration. And mass if we have an increase in mass, we also have a lowering of acceleration or a lowering of the rate in which motion changes. 
So that's why mass is a good measure of inertia. And this leads us to Newton's first law. An object at rest stays at rest, and an object in motion stays in constant velocity unless acted on by an external net force. Let's move on to equilibrium, and this is also known as mechanical equilibrium. So equilibrium is defined as an object with no external net forces acting on it. We often call this condition balanced forces. Now there are two types of equilibrium. There's static equilibrium, and that's where the net force is zero and the velocity is zero. And this is an object that will be at rest, motionless. The other type of equilibrium is known as dynamic equilibrium. It too has a net force equal to zero and its velocity is constant but not zero. And this would be an object that is moving with constant velocity. So again, in physics, you often see static referring to at rest or stationary and dynamic meaning moving. Well, let's take a look at some examples. Here we have a car at rest. We draw a force diagram. We see the Earth's force of gravity pulling down on the car and the road surface pushing up with a normal force on the car and these forces are balanced and the car is not moving. This is an example of static equilibrium. Let's go ahead and look at a car at constant velocity. Well, at constant velocity we know that the vertical forces are balanced, the gravitational force and the normal force, and we know that there's a traction force that wants to propel the car forward, and since it's moving at constant velocity, that force is balanced by these resistance friction resistance forces, friction between the car tires and the road surface, and also the drag force between the molecules in the atmosphere and the car. And because the forces are balanced, we have no net force, so that makes it an equilibrium condition. But because the car is moving, it's a dynamic equilibrium. Let's take a look at one more example. Here we have a person sitting on a roof, sloped surface. We have the force of gravity straight down. Of course, that's no longer on the x or y axis because we're going to rotate our axes so that the x axis is parallel to the roof's surface. Therefore, we have the normal force pushing up on the person perpendicular to the roof's surface. That's along the y-axis. We have friction force pushing up on the person, and that is parallel to the roof's surface. And the gravity force, we need to break into its x component, which balances out the friction force, and we break it into its y component, which balances out the normal force. So we have balanced forces, no net force. This is static equilibrium because the person is not moving. Let's go ahead and summarize what we've learned. All particles, objects, possess inertia. That is a resistance to the change in their motion. And Newton's first law defines the natural state of motion. It says an object at rest will stay at rest, and an object at mo in motion will stay in motion, constant velocity motion. And we know this condition, this natural state of motion, as mechanical equilibrium. And of course, we can have static or dynamic mechanical equilibrium. Well, this covers what we need to know about Newton's first law. I hope you found this podcast helpful.